everybody. It's Sunday morning. We're heading to Phoenix. We're going on a car trip. I got a typewriter to pick up at Bill Wall's Mesa Typewriter Exchange. And uh, we're taking a bunch of junk, but look at also, among other things, we're taking, yes, we're taking our entire barista coffee setup, our espresso thing, because we're coffee freaks, I know. Hitting the road to go to Phoenix to pick up a typewriter. All right, well, we're on the outskirts of Grants, New Mexico. Boy, the Interstate 40 was sure busy with traffic, trucks, RVs. So we're on the road heading to Arizona. We're gassing up in Holbrook, Arizona, but I wanted to show you something here. This little green bag right here, that is a typewriter. My Olympia SF, yeah, I brought a typewriter so that I could type maybe before I actually get my Hermes rocket back from Bill Wall. But anyways, yeah, I brought an extra typewriter because you gotta, always got to have one on the road. It is true, we are coffee snobs. That's better than hotel coffee, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, it feels good to be in our hotel this evening, uh, making our trek over to Arizona from New Mexico. It was kind of a long trip, uh, longer, it seemed longer than it should have been because the traffic on Interstate 40 was so slow because of so many trucks and also road construction, but uh, we made it and uh, the weather here in Mesa, uh, Phoenix area is just gorgeous, 70 degrees uh, for a high, just room temperature basically, so really good temperatures. We got into our hotel and we made contact with Ted Monk, yes, the right Reverend Ted Monk, and we arranged to have dinner tonight and that was a great time together conversing and having fun and so we plan on Meeting up tomorrow, I'm going to be dropping by Bill Wall's Mesa Typewriter Exchange to pick up my Hermes Rocket Typewriter. And then Ted and I, we're going to go over to his house, uh, check out his typewriters, and then we might do some thrift store shopping in the area. And that sounds a lot of fun. Oh, and also, we're going to try to hook up with another one of the Typosphere members, members uh, Cameron Peacock. And that'll be fun, too. <laughs> Here we are in Mesa, Arizona, and this are. is the famous uh, Right Reverend Ted Monk, and behind us is the Mesa Typewriter Exchange right here. This is Bill Wall's place. He's been here since he was a kid, and his dad owned the business, and maybe his grandpa? Yep. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And look, the guy himself is back there working again. Non-stop typewriter action going on right now. How you doing, Joe? Good. <laughs> well, we're here. We're Mesa here. Typewriter Exchange. And uh, we're with uh, Bill Wall. And off-camera is the right Reverend Ted Monk. Here yeah, there is There is right hand. The right-hand man. <laughs> the right-hand. Right. And my, my lens focal length, I can't even get it in the, get everybody in the picture. I think, I think most of the problem is that it's just a tiny space. <laughs> it is. Quite. So, so, there it is packed with typewriters. So did, is, was it your father or grandfather that started this? Your dad? Um, my, my grandfather went in business actually with another guy that had started months before and ran an ad. Most people think my grandfather had started this. The other guy had started it and immediately ran an ad for someone to be in business with. And so my grandfather answered the ad. And, uh, and so they ran it as a partnership for, I think, only about one year, maybe year, year and a half. And then uh, my grandfather bought him out. Wow. And so exclusively went into our family late 48, 
49 right in through there. Nice. I think the original business license was probably taken out in the end of 46, 47, oh. something like that. But uh, And it was in this same building, the same strip mall. Basically, kind of. yeah, actually right next door okay. at 32 South McDonald yeah. is where they started. Oh. And then after only a year or two, went to 24 South McDonald. Mm. And then here at 30 South McDonald in uh, 1955. Mm. What, 70 years now? Wow, amazing. So, so yeah. So it's it's surviving and prospering a hope a little yeah, bit. Yeah, the heartbeat's still, still heartbeat going. Heartbeat's still going. Whereas 20 years ago, it was you know, it was one of those things where... You weren't real sure. You weren't real sure, you know. I thought, oh, boy, it's this time to not be doing typewriters anymore. Yeah. And it, it's, I guess, a good thing that I didn't have other great options at the time because I may have jumped ship at that point. Oh, yeah. 20 years ago, but I did, there was nothing clear as to where I was going to... So I just kind of hung with it, right? kind of, you know, yeah. stayed with it for a few years. And then all of a sudden, yeah, there was starting to be a glimmer. Yeah. Um, yeah. And now yeah. Eric shows up. Yay. It Eric, was, hey. come on back. Hey, Eric. Yeah. We're doing interviews. <laughs> Ten machines. We got a party to, now. Oh, my goodness. It's Cameron. Hey. Were you already involved with typewriters, or did that kind of spark some interest in you and, and increase your interest in typewriters when we did that first type-in? Uh, so I actually didn't go to the first type-in. Um, you weren't there when we did no. the first one, but then the no, second I, one. Yeah. I think it was the second one. It was the 2016 type-in. Okay. That was when I um, was... I. That was the first year I started working at Changing Hands. Right. Yeah. And so I was like working during that event. I saw all these typewriters. So I was like, oh, these seem pretty cool. But, so like, you were not in, really that no. interested in them prior to that? No. And oh, I think okay. it was that the same year that you bought the Underwood from Yeah, you, right? I bought yeah. that. Yeah, that 39 Underwood. That's yeah. what I remember. Yeah. I was there when the, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Very cool. Memories. Well, <laughs> well, so Cameron, tell us, tell the camera what your blog is. What's the name of your blog? Uh, so it's the Daily Platin. Right. Uh, it's just now kind of getting started on uh on like an actual blog rather than instagram profile it's at the daily platin um on instagram and mm -hmm. then okay the daily platin dot blogspot dot com okay. for the, uh, yeah the typecast blog cool. yeah very cool, cool. So, very yeah cool. i'm gonna start once i've got uh photos developed from uh this past <laughs> type and i i plan on doing a, a full type and report with so he's some a of film the, man too love yeah, it yes, yeah yes. just getting into I that brought the camera i didn't even think yeah, about it I've got a, yeah i thought about that on the way over and i was just like kicking myself ah, I brought we did Pentax. bring a 3d camera yeah yeah so, a nishiki yeah. is it yeah or, oh, nishika nishika yeah. you know they'll come in and starting to come in with some frequency maybe once a week or right once or twice a month and um, and at some point in time like I say it, and who knows whether that's a few months or a year or two or whatever it will seem to plateau at some point in time I'm well it hasn't with Ted Ted started coming oh, I'm, years I'm, ago. I'm on the downswing yeah I'm and, 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 and Eric I don't see 40. Eric with frequency as I used <laughs> yeah. to but it's funny and so initially when I first saw that pattern showing up ten years ago uh, Jim was one okay. of the first ones that came to one of our very first type ins. He had some really cool machines when coming with here with frequency. I haven't seen him in a few years now. Right. So he may have moved from the area. Maybe sure. he's not even around People anymore. Come and go out of the community. Yeah, yeah. And so when I would first see this pattern, this trend where people would come in and I go, oh, I've kind of lost my customer base a little. But then, th you know, nature hates a vacuum. And yeah, it seems yeah. that there's always a new. So I always, there's always some machines up here that belong to someone who's on the front part of that. <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and it, it seems to, the, the momentum is still moving. So it's, I, a, it's I, a surfing analogy, but it's the, right. the wave is still There's always in. someone to catch yeah. a new wave yeah. that yeah. there's a, always fresh excitement with a new, and so yeah. not, th I mean, I don't see Eric as much as anymore, and we used to have great visits, but I understand that it still goes through that. Right. Right. And so some of the, like I say, some of my customers that used to come in with frequency that we'd chat and, and you know, talk about their typewriters also, I don't see them a lot anymore, and yeah. that's understandable. Right. But uh, there's always, it seemed like a new group coming behind them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that's so, good. Yeah. Well, and then we, now you guys have two typing events at the same, on the same week, right? The same day. Same right. Day. Same yeah. Time, yeah. Same day. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's good. I don't know <laughs> if any other community in the United States that has that problem. Right. Just having three people uh, putting the the 
type ins together all you right. know, yeah. at the same time. Mm-hmm. That's that's yeah. amazing. The momentum's still there. I haven't yeah. seen it. <clears throat> you know, because when this all first started 10, 15 years ago, I thought, is this just a bump? Yeah. Or is this going to sustain itself? And yeah. at some point in time, I'm sure it'll play out. But right now, I... I still feel a momentum driving this. Yeah. Right. And, uh, I'm still having conversations with like people who are just now getting into me too. Like, like I bar. say, I, yeah. yeah, right. So well, well, and I think the nice thing with the people, even the people who are plateauing and moving down the other side of the wave, I still use yeah, typewriters every day. Yeah, well, they haven't mm-hmm. lost interest. Yeah. It's just that still part they, of they can't keep gathering machines. Right. They, you know, they're definitely going to run out of business or room at some point in time. Exactly. But, right. um, but yeah, I still use them every day. That's right. it's pretty much where I am. I, I, you know, I use them all the time, but I have the 40 that I am going to want to keep. And that's enough, <laughs> really. <laughs> Are you sure that 40 is enough? 40 seems to be, I mean, the it's ones that I have right now, and you've seen them, you yeah. saw them all on yeah. the shelves. and. They, they address all the needs that I have. Right. Um, I mean, there's a lot that I would want. I'd love to have that Roxy, but mm. he's never going to put that on the market. <laughs> um, and, but, I, you know, it's not a need. I have all the machines that, I, that really fulfill the, right. the roles that I need. Right. They're all working pretty good. You know, some of them I have to tinker with still, and that's, you know, that's another part of that whole experience mm. is, yep. you know, taking them apart, tuning them up, Right. And that's you know I have the ones that really speak to me and address all the the collecting needs that I want mm. because I I don't collect for rarity right so I don't have to be oh uh, you know this there's only forty of these made I need to make sure I get one of those and so you're collecting more for functionality I, I yeah. collect for functionality right. and appeal appeal mm-hmm. yeah it's just you know do I like this one does it feel good to me yeah. do I, am I creative on it and that's that's basically my criteria so i want to ask bill a question here but related to that is do you think there's a there's a new it's a different kind of collector now like there's the old school collectors that were collecting them as like antiques it's, or it's, you know i've sold a couple of machines that ended up that way but right. people will, when they find out what i do they think my customer base is just one demographic it's just one group and i said no it's pretty varied even the younger people uh that come in they don't even fit in the same category some are hipster kids some are nerdy kids um, yeah. And so, I, I, you know, you could break them down into maybe five or six categories, but it's varied. You know, you've got series collectors. Uh, yeah. I, you know, like I say, it's it's not just one specific group that I can say, yeah, they're all this. Well, that's good. And so, that's a good thing, right? Right, yeah. It's diverse. And, yeah. so, and I don't even ask people sometimes what they come in. Sometimes I get chatty with them, but I don't know. They'll say, what are all those people your customers using? I, I don't know. They just keep <laughs> coming in and wanting me to fix them, and so I do. <laughs> and when they quit coming in is when I'll finally finish and retire. But I don't question what a lot of these people are <laughs> using them for. Yeah. So Very utilitarian about that. Right. Yeah. Your business is your business. <laughs> uh, do you still get people coming in asking to have typewriters for, like, wedding receptions? And yeah. All? Is that still I, a thing? Yeah. Yeah, I get that occasionally. I don't get it quite as much. That seemed like it was trendy. Yeah, a couple of years ago, I had a lot of people would rent a machine or have a machine fixed up and it was going to be for wedding. And it still happens, but I don't get the frequency of that request. But something different for me, um, most of my customers, in fact, you guys all fit in the same category, which makes me different. I don't really... So I came upon this <clears throat> line of work just as a result of my family being involved with this. Mm-hmm. And so I don't really share the passion. I do somewhat. I appreciate some of the unique machines. Like Ted knows there's certain machines out there he would love to have. And, I, and, and because there is an appeal to those, and I appreciate that too. But yeah. <clears throat> I think the, um, the, the appeal for typewriters runs deeper with you guys than it does me. Right. Um, yeah. It's from a different perspective. I'm coming at it from a different angle. Sure. I, I, it's fun to fix machines and get them working. I really don't care to clean typewriters. But yeah. <laughs> if a machine comes in and it's broke, it's it's kind of a fixing a puzzle right. sometimes. So, But I don't share the passion for the typewriters. I don't write. I'm not a writer, really. Yeah. I'm not that creative. And so if right. I was, I would probably have a number of machines at my house and maybe be sending out personal letters to people mm. and actually using these typewriters. Mm-hmm. Uh, not just r- repairing them and yeah. so I feed off the enthusiasm of my customers which I don't share their enthusiasm really I don't have all right. of you there's something inside you that there's an a, 
there's something that you feel for tire predators that I probably don't the have or appeal. don't experience. Yeah. Right. Uh, other than I feed off that excitement. If I get a young person coming or someone cameras it or whatever, and, and they've experienced tire predators for the first time, that I feed off that. If my customer base had continued to just get older and older, it would have stagnated. My job would have stagnated. I'd probably still be doing it, but I probably wouldn't have the uh, enjoyment. Uh, there's not right. a day I don't enjoy coming to work because right. I don't know who's going to come through the front door. I enjoy it's kind of low key. I can sit and visit with you guys yeah. today. Yeah. I'm no one's holding me to the fire and said uh, you yeah. better get to work <laughs> on the clock here. But like I say, I don't. I'm always fascinated by my customers that come in that love these typewriters because they're experiencing something I don't have and I've not felt it. That's interesting. But yeah. I can feed off of that and I can yeah. appreciate it. Mm -hmm. right. And and I do enjoy my job fixing. But for example, some of the, uh, you know, the, the Facebook pages and some of the, the typosphere and all that, yeah. I don't really get involved with that because I don't share the passion. I don't think... This on the level job. that you guys do, yeah. Right. yeah when right. it's five o'clock, I'm so when you retire, I'm gonna go hiking or, yeah. or when you retire so, someday, you don't want to ever see another goddamn typewriter again. <laughs> you know, I, no, there's some, and my son has laid claim to a number of them. He doesn't yeah. even want to do this for work, but he right. still loves the okay. the heritage that our oh, yeah. family. He right. would be a fourth generation sure. if he was doing this, and so he understands that. And there's certain machines that he says when you retire. I'm building a display okay. case in my right. house, and there's certain machines that I'm going to love to display. And that's the heritage. Well, yeah, the heritage. Family, this is what my family, family has business. done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah. but that's kind of where I'm at. So yeah. in the evening time, I don't really follow the blogs, or I don't yeah. get on Facebook and right. and add in on some of the conversations because, like I said, there's something yeah. off I, the clock. <laughs> yeah, and, and not only that, I, like I say, there's something in those people that is not in me, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. Right. But I still love my job, and I love the people that I work with. And, but I, I still love them inside looking out. Yes. Where Shop. most most of my customers are outside looking outside in. Looking in. So That's they look good. at the machine, they see it as a, a visual looking at the thing. Right. Where I don't, when I see a machine... I think about what it looks like with the covers off. Oh, yeah. I, I can see the guts, and I can see the selectric and the cycle clutch and all. That's what I see. I don't see it visually from uh, the outside. Oh, uh, interesting. And so when Ryan first started, and I don't know if you were a part of Ryan's yes, in starting you, that. You were both uh, involved with that in 2011? Right. Was the first one? The first time. Um, yeah, I... I was excited to to take part because it was still at a time where I still feel that typewriters, for the most part, if I tell if I'm out socially and meet people and I tell them what I do, it's yeah. I feel the, the typings help validate what I do. <laughs> you, you always seemed really surprised about my level of enthusiasm in the first few. Couple yeah, of right. Years. Yeah, Ted was one of the first <laughs> that uh, you know really was, and so. Just to be involved with people that were that excited about it, right. um, like I say, for me it validated my still hanging with this. I don't know. I just get a sense of the uh, enthusiasm beyond just the walls of my, yeah, you know, store right. when right. I get out and about and see other people showing up. And because uh, the very first type in we did, I what less than a dozen people maybe yeah it, um, it we, we thought it was pretty amazing but uh, yeah we, we didn't get a lot of people compared to what we're, we get today, and even the second one i see the first couple that that ryan and ted got together on if we had 10 or 12 people it seemed good and yeah I, yeah but you guys are doing you know you and jeremiah are doing much better as far as promoting it like right flyers out there and yeah stuff than, than we ever did we right weren't really right yeah pushing it quite so much i mm -hmm. guess no, Ryan would hope some people from his school would come and yeah. whatever customer base I had here that I had informed put, about it. We put flyers here. That was about the extent of it. But yeah, now with Cameron's group. I've got to, I mean, I, I also have to like justify to to like my management that mm -hmm. this is a worthwhile effort that is bringing in traffic. And it has been. Like right, the, yeah. the summer type in, we count about 100 people filtered in and out throughout the type in. Yeah. The first few, it was, it was, it was still fun to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but well, they, it was, they were all strangers to us because we didn't right. know who was coming or yeah. showing up. So, how many but I do enjoy so? the type yeah. I don't look yeah. at them as like, oh, I need to go. This is work related. Yeah. I should go. Yeah. 
it, it has to come with within. You can't convert yeah. someone to be a typewriter enthusiast. It's That's something true. they there's something in them that when they discover a typewriter, it, it builds inside them, and it it's totally them happens to tell my happens. friends, say, "Hey, you <laughs> should you should have a typewriter, and you should start using them." You can't do that. It right. has to, it has to be with it needs to come from within. It's probably two or three things that will draw someone to a typewriter. It could be a writer, and maybe mm -hmm. they're they're feeling an appreciation for decades gone by, and maybe their favorite writer that used a machine. So they, but there are people that are into mechanical things because yeah. I have customers that yeah. are not only collect typewriters, but the same customer will connect pocket watches and. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, cameras, right. mm -hmm. and so they're into mechanical precision yeah. Yeah. type things that are made. So there's a charter school right near here, just across the street, and I'm friends with a guy that teaches the keyboarding class. Oh. And so every semester, when he gets a new keyboarding class, he has a field trip, and they come over, oh. and he brings them in sections because my shop's so small. So we'll he'll usually bring. Oh, eight or ten at a time in here, and he breaks it up into about three groups, and they come in. And so, of the maybe ten or twelve kids that come in, there's maybe two or three that really gravitate. The rest are kind of good, and there's usually one or two that could care less. He's in here, he's bored, or yeah. she, and they yeah. don't want to even be here. The other ones will, oh, they're kind of interested, but usually there's two or three that really are. Mm focused on the machine and mm -hmm. it's you can see that they're they're the they're one yes. of them they're one yeah. of us yes, they're one they of are. you guys well, anyway they're, not, they're not even one of me they're one of you guys <laughs> they're, they're it sounds like ted you need to convert this guy to be a type of i think it has to come from inside here's like the thing I is say. he he says all these things about he's not <laughs> I think if I was a writer and creative yeah. with writing and I was a wordsmith, I think I would find, because I do appreciate the machines, yeah, I love to sure. be inside of them and sure. see what they do. So I like that. You also say it. that you don't have machines at home, but I know you do. I've got a few. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really don't get them I out. I know there are machines here that you will not let go of. Right. No, that's true. <laughs> but like I say, it would be great if I was creative and was a writer. Yeah. And you, yeah. sir, are in denial. <laughs> right. Yeah. He's a closeted... I'm a closet... No, closet down the street. Yes. A closet typist. Yeah. A closet typist. Right. Yeah. I work with scouts also. And there's been occasions where I've given a presentation or maybe a little interactive thing with the scouts. And I've... I don't have a printer at my house at all. I've got my laptop, but I know printer. And one of the times we were talking about a certain subject with the scouts, um, I wanted them to participate. So most people would have done it on their, their yeah. computer and printed out. Well, I got up my typewriter, the same one that I backpack, ran it in, typed out. There was maybe a half a dozen or more questions that I wanted them to read the question and respond to it, whether, whether we were talking about hiking. I can't remember what it was. So I handed them out. And I said to the first scout, I said, you go ahead and read yours and, and then respond to the question. He goes, how did you do this? <laughs> That's the first thing he said. He didn't even read it. He looked at the print, could tell it was distinct print, right. that it didn't come off a printer. Right. Mm -hmm. And he says, how did you do this? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was good. The only thing I've used my typewriter for, I do care. I have a small lightweight machine at home that I've backpacked a few times, oh, yeah. and we've taken it on hikes because some of the people I hike with do like to yeah. uh, type up on top of a mountaintop. Oh, yeah. I'll bust the little typewriter on my pack, and they love to compose up on a mountaintop. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the uh, mountains here locally, it's pick a post, and there's a mm. mailbox with a hiking log inside of it. So if you hike to the very top, oh, yeah. you can pull the log out, sign your name. Oh, nice. And well, we've taken typewriters up there, and they've actually typed out their hiking experiences. One year it was Christmas time, they actually wrote letters to Santa Claus and shoved them in the mailbox. <laughs> Show us what you're. What are you working on here? What's, uh, what's this guy? This is a little. Uh, a little royal portable probably from the 30s yeah. ted would be able to date this exactly probably just looking at it uh, uh, it's, it's probably a wartime model because it's got black trim okay so that's probably a pre just before probably 41 okay. i'm gonna guess okay. ted's my go-to and i i can always bust the book out but uh <laughs> sometimes i'll get an obscure machine and yeah. something and so what is it what does it need What's this one didn't need a lot uh it just you know a few sticking keys it mm -hmm. had been I had actually serviced this machine probably four or five years for him, and it just kind of got into a stage of not yeah. being used. Right. And it's just sat around and collected some dust right. and uh, a few sticking keys. Um, the ribbon lift mechanism not working well. It was cutting off characters. Mm. And, 
Nice. So it, it doesn't need a lot. But That's a beautiful it, little yeah, machine. Yeah, still a nice machine, and uh, you know, cosmetically it looks great. The paint's still good on it, so it'll be a nice, you know, yeah. typing machine. That's a sweet so machine. So hopefully they use it this time. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. The last time I think after I serviced it, they took it home. They used it initially, I mm. think, but then it mm. sat. Someone in the family is going to start using it, and yeah. so they brought it in. And said, "Hey, there's a few, a few things that need to be brought back." Well, good. Uh, I think yeah. they've got a daughter at college that wants to start typing on it, and she's good coming for in her. for the holidays. So that's nice. This one's going to be done. That's sweet. And then over by Cameron here, you have a Selectric, right? Yeah, Selectric, and those still come in. Yeah, you know, fairly. And, and those things are regular. always needing work, right there. Yeah, they can just because yeah. there's so much in them, you know. So it's not uncommon. I I never did sell those machines over the years as a trouble-free machine. Yeah. People say, are oh, the Selectrics the best? And I said, well. If you think if the best is the best touch in an electric typewriter, I always thought it was one of the best machines. Right. But they're not necessarily a, a trouble-free or right. maintenance. If someone comes and sells it, you know, I'm looking for a machine that's not going to break down. I said, buy a manual. Don't, don't buy a Selectric. Right. And then I point at my uh, Olympia SG-1 out there that's been sitting there since my dad put it there back in the late 70s, early 80s. And I've been addressing envelopes and, uh, you know, minor correspondence. I've never done anything to it. <laughs> if I'd have had a Selectric sitting there for yeah. 35, 40 years, believe me, it would have made a trip back here yeah. on different occasions for different things. Sure. If nothing sure. more than just periodic maintenance, right. you know, right. oiling and greasing. So. It's great talking with you, Bill. Oh, it's been it's fun. Fantastic. And to have you, yeah. Tad, Cameron, yeah. and uh, Eric, it, 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 everyone show up. It's yeah. kind of a... A little, little party, a little time. party reunion. <laughs> right. right. Well, thank you very much. And that's what's fun about my shop, because oh, yeah. there's times even... Any of these guys even show up separately, it's kind of... Um, you know, know. he's got an hour, an hour and a half of uh, yeah, yeah. And like stories I say, and stuff. And, I, so. and people say, oh, am I keeping you from your work? But even still, I'll come down at work. At, like if it's a day, let's say this machine was promised today and I didn't, or tomorrow, I'll just come down and work tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I, because yeah. this, I mean, I don't hold myself to the fire as far as I let this be... This the shop runs at my pace, okay. and I don't have a boss. And yeah. I do have a lot of machines out there for repair. And uh, sure. but and I will accommodate if someone gives me two months, I'll take two months. But if I have someone floating through town and says I have to have this in two days, I'll come down at work at night. Oh, yeah. Or if a customer or someone comes in and wants to chat, I'll do it. And right. even though I've got something maybe pressing, yeah. I'll come down at night and work. That's and, good. And, and knock it out. So work life balance is what right. they call it. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah. Enjoys his life. Yeah. That's very right. good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Well, we certainly enjoyed our trip to Arizona, to Mesa, Arizona, and spending time with Ted and Bill and Cameron and Eric. What a great time we had. I especially enjoyed the uh, interview session that we had with Bill and the other typospherians. And, you know, Bill has had some uh, national recognition on various uh, uh, interviews, uh, notably the CBS Morning Show, and I think there's been one or two local or regional television interviews he's had also. But uh, this interview was really special to me because I was really focusing more on his relationship to typewriters and to the typosphere, the typewriter enthusiast community. And I just was really appreciating his insights in regarding to that. And also I appreciated gaining a little bit more understanding about his relationship to the typewriter in relation to him being a third generation typewriter uh, business owner. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. I hope you guys got some benefit from that interview. Now, I also really enjoyed the time I spent with Ted Monk. Uh, Ted is a veteran typewriter collector, typewriter enthusiast, and blogger. And one of the things that I really enjoyed about Ted, I didn't know this was going to happen the day Monday, the full day we had together, was Ted is a veteran blogger. And if you haven't visited his uh, to type, shoot straight, and tell the truth typewriter blog, you really need to go visit it. There is a link down below in the doobly-doo section. Ted was uh, blogging that day, what I would call stealth blogging. And this shows his veteran experience as a blogger. What I call stealth blogging, he just fits it into his everyday activities. He had his piece of paper with him. He sat down at Bill's typewriter blogged a little bit. He sat down at his own typewriter before and after. 
I was really interested in seeing uh, Ted's methodology and how he fits blogging into his daily life, and that was pretty cool. So I also really enjoyed the time that the brief time that we spent with Cameron and Eric, and I have regrets that I was unable to interview Cameron and Eric more. They their conversation I recorded some of it as we were talking to Bill in his shop, but. Really, I would encourage you guys to go and visit Eric's KeySnap blog and uh, Cameron's uh, The Daily Platin blog. Links are down below. And also, I wanted to comment that I think that blogging is really a superior form of social media. And I really encourage you guys to visit the typewriter bloggers and comment to their blogs. Leave comments on their blogs. Give feedback. Have a dialogue. Have that exchange going of, of ideas. If you don't know where the master list of typewriter blogs is, go to the Typosphere link down below. When you visit that, on the right side of the page, there will be a master list of all the typewriter bloggers, most of them at least. So I encourage you guys, visit the typewriter bloggers, read the blogs, comment the blogs. And if you're a typewriter enthusiast, why don't you start your own blog? Finally, when we were in Mesa at our hotel the morning that we were leaving, uh, one of the staff at the hotel noticed me typing on my Hermes rocket in the breakfast room and she was really enthusiastic about the typewriter and I thought that was very cool a new person introduced to typewriters and then when we were driving back to Albuquerque in the little town of Payson Arizona we stopped in at the Common Grounds coffee shop and again another patron to the coffee shop noticed my typewriter I was finishing up my blog article and she again was enthusiastic about typewriters and she even mentioned I have an old pink corona at home and I encouraged her to get it out of the closet start using it and maybe get a ribbon on into it if she needs it but again there's plenty of people out there who are potential converts to typewriters we just need to evangelize them and make our love for typewriters known far and wide well I really enjoyed this trip and it was a great time spent with some of the typosphere the typewriter enthusiast community down in the Mesa Arizona Phoenix Arizona area hope you enjoyed this and until next time have yourselves a great day